of IRA sirens told the people of Londonderry that the assault against the no-go areas had begun. In drenching pre-dawn rain, four and a half thousand troops, nearly one quarter of the total military strength in Northern Ireland, flooded into the bog sides of Craigan and Brandywell, ripping down the barricades which had sealed the area for nearly three years. Within minutes, troops poured out of armoured vehicles to begin patrolling areas that haven't seen a British soldier since 1969. For the first time, the army used tracked vehicles, giant converted centurion tanks, to crash through the biggest barricades. Almost instantly, the thing the army has wanted most in the area, the power to search houses for guns, gunmen and explosives was theirs, and they began to use it. Through the streets, the armoured vehicles rumbled, ready for instant call if the threatened IRA defence action materialised. But most of the IRA had vanished. In fact, there was virtually no opposition. This was one of the few points where the army did come under fire. The army claims at least two gunmen killed, three wounded, and the final toll may be higher. Ambulances were allowed through the tight security ring to carry out the dead and wounded. For a while, the bog side appeared stunned by the speed and power of the army move, but as the hours passed, crowds began gathering to shout their opposition to the presence of the troops. Military controls gripped the whole of Londonderry, sealing off the only entry bridge to all but a limited number of vehicles. There's no indication when the bridge will be reopened. In Belfast too, the army moved against barricades, this one a Catholic barricade in the new lodge area, dismantled without opposition. The short-lived Protestant UDA no-go barricades also disappeared today without any trouble. The Secretary for Northern Ireland, Mr. William Whitelaw, claims the whole operation was a total success, and certainly tonight the army is moving with complete freedom. For the moment, Mr. Whitelaw has a new breathing space. How long it will last depends on how long he is able to call on the massive military strength which is his right now. power was not sufficient to beat the bombers today. Three bombs planted in cars ripped the heart out of the village of Claudie, close to London Bay, where they exploded without warning. At least seven people, including an eight-year-old girl, died. Twenty-four other people were taken to hospital. The bombs were placed to go off exactly as the post-weekend shopping rush began. <laughs> 